Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number one from the 2025 AP pre-calculus exam. So they only release one set of questions. Uh, I know that people had lots of different questions. These are the only ones that uh, they put out for the public. So uh, let's see what it looked like. Number one, the function f is decreasing and is defined for all real numbers. The table gives values for f of x at selected values of x. Uh, we have a table. The function g is defined by uh, g of x equals negative 0.167x cubed plus x squared minus 1.834. Kind of an ugly function. All right, number one, we want to find uh, h of x is g of f of x, and we need to find the value of h of 1. So just take it a piece at a time, um, and you'll be fine. So we're finding h of 1, which is going to be g of f of 1. So f is determined by the table. So we go up to the table, and we try to find f of 1. f of 1 is 1.75. Now we need to find g of 1.75, so we're gonna need a calculator or we're gonna use Desmos. I use both. Uh, I prefer the calculator, so here's my calculator work, so I get 0.333, so let's write that down. If you're choosing to use Desmos, or that's what you have available to you, uh, I just define the graph. Uh, it looks a little weird on my screen there. I don't know, I, I just typed it in, um, and then I uh, plugged in g of 1.75. Got the same answer, so that's reassuring. Uh, then we want to find the value of f inverse of 3.5 or indicate that it's not defined. So this is saying like the y value of f is 3.5. What is the x value that goes with that? So uh, we're just going to look up at the table. We're going to say f inverse of 3.5 is look at all the y values. You can see here's 3.5. It comes from x equals 0. So f inverse of 3.5 is 0. Let's look at the next part. So this is b. Um, find all values of x as decimal approximations for which g of x equals zero or indicate that there are no such values. Uh, this just, I just use solve on the calculator. Um, so I solve g of x equals zero and then there's just these three values. So negative 1.233, x is approximately 1.578 and x is approximately 5.643. Now on Desmos, I did this a slightly different way uh, I graphed the function, I graphed zero, and then I found where they intersected. Um, I don't use Desmos a lot. You probably actually, initially I just thought that it equaled one, which is why I also graphed zero instead of whatever. You probably could have just like clicked on the intersection points, um, but you can see those are our values. They're the same. So either way you do it, that's how you get the answer. Then we need to determine the uh, n behavior of g as x increases without bound. We want to express our answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. So you can see from the Desmos graph that as x increases without bound, uh, the graph of g of x tends toward negative infinity or it decreases without bound. Um, so I'm gonna just basically write that. I also use my calculator and typed in the limit. So the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x was negative infinity. Um, so now we need to write this up. So I'm not gonna make you watch me write everything. I'll just read it. As x increases without bound, so I'm just repeating what was in the question. Uh, the output values of g of x eventually decrease without bound. Now that's not using limit notation, so now we need to write our limit notation. So I'm gonna say, uh, therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x is equal to negative infinity. So I think that that's really the only part you need on that, but I'm not sure because the answer keys they put out always have that first like sentence thing. So we're always looking to try to get a perfect score on this thing, so we included it. Uh, let's take a look at the next part. So part C, uh, based on the table, which of the following function types best models uh, the function f? So is it linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic? So uh, this we do a lot of work on in class, just memorizing how to deal with these. Uh, my first thought is all the delta x's are the same. They're all changing by one. So that's good. That means that it is either linear, quadratic, or exponential. You look at the relationship and immediately you kind of see like 14 divided by two um, is seven or 14 times 0.5. Um, and then if you multiply by 0.5 again, you get this. 0.5 again, you get this. I didn't bother with the last one because we already know. Uh, so the outputs are proportional. That means this is definitely exponential. So our first answer here is exponential. <laughs> it's definitely modeled by an exponential. And then once it's modeled by an exponential, we just have to write down the thing that we memorized about that. So I have my students memorize these. I actually quiz them, like just write down the, the explanation. Um, so we start off with, since the output values change proportionally over, and then this is annoying to say, it is equal length input value intervals. I have a lot of trouble saying that. I feel like a lot of the words sound the same and maybe there are just too many Vs. Um, so 
since the output values change proportionally over equal length input value intervals, an exponential model fits best. And that's all we need to do. So that's the uh, first question. I hope this was helpful and good luck.